This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armies Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, he's taking a look at the military sim shooter Squad, and meeting a few fans along the way. Hello. <laughs> Hello Royal Armies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's superb. If there are any other games, guns, and mechanics that you want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comments section. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one, and if you'd like to help out the Royal Armies Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Thank you. All right, quick pause there. So far, so good. I do like the look and feel of this. Uh, I'm intrigued by the realism aspect, which this already looks to have a lot of. So we're not we're not really running and gunning very much. Uh, we've got the RPK 74M, quite a good implementation of it. Uh, I like the the gas that's jetting out of the gas block, although that might be a little excessive. I don't know that I've seen it do it to that extent, but I like the, the sort of awareness that that's something that happens. The actual usage of it is good, but one of the first things I, I see is a bipod being deployed. Brilliant. We've talked before about how light machine guns has to be fired from some sort of amount for to be truly effective. If you can if you can fit the feet of the bipod on it, you're going to be able to use that as a stable firing platform to actually provide not just accurate fire but suppressive fire, which is the purpose, primary purpose of a machine gun. Push in, push in, push in. Let's go, let's go. Building this. We have the, the PKP, uh, the Petroneg as it's, as it's called, which is essentially an assault variant of the PKM. Entirely appropriate to see it in this game, of course. And what I'm, what I'm struck by here in the loading animation is some really nice attention to detail where the, the player character lifts up the feed tray and checks, visually checks the chamber to see that the gun is clear, which is something that uh, video games don't normally trouble themselves with, but in any kind of armed force is absolutely essentially part of the drill, part of the manual of arms. So that right there tells you that you are playing a, a milsim. I really like the reloading animation in general here because we, it, it feels, the gun model feels like it has more weight. It doesn't just feel like one of those um, belt-fed assault rifle like machine guns that we get in first-person shooters. It's more kind of, it, He's having to manhandle it, turn it over, fit the ammo box, put everything back into position. It looks like it might weigh something, which I think is it helps immerse you in what's going on. We've seen the player get killed a couple of times. Clearly, very few bullets required to kill anyone and I think I'm detecting a suppression mechanic here whereby bullet cracking past you which you can hear and although I've never been in any kind of combat thankfully I've spoken to plenty of people who have and that that sound is pretty distinctive um, you've seen it in more realistic movies like Black Hawk Down you can tell from the noise a bullet makes how close it is to you and we also get it we get a narrow, narrowing of the vision and I don't think that's from a bullet hit I think that's from a bullet nearby and again all accounts from veterans say that your your focus narrows maybe not maybe not with a black tunnel but the effect is the same you become hyper focused on what's directly in front of you because of the you know your essentially your fight or flight response is kicking in because you know that you could die at any second that's almost impossible to convey in a video game but an effect like that comes very close Gladdens my heart to see the, um, the poor old SA80 in a video game generally. So this, I'm afraid this just this just isn't realistic because the SA80 hasn't jammed once. Um, I just had to throw that in there before someone in the comments did. Uh, in reality, the L85A2 is an extremely reliable and very accurate infantry rifle. Of course, famously, it, uh, the A1 was not great. There hasn't there haven't been any any serious issues reported with uh, since the very beginning with the A2 version. I don't believe we get stoppages 
modelled in this game. I could be wrong. I may, I may be proven wrong later on. So it's kind of irrelevant anyway. But uh, there is there's a very strong uh, meme, effectively, of the SA-80 being just the worst rifle ever. It's not the worst rifle ever by any means. Currently, as it genuinely is as reliable as anything else in NATO right now. So we need to move past that meme, I think. Now, I think what's really nice to see, and I'm, I think uh, we're seeing both here because it's a demonstration, but we see accurate aimed semi-automatic fire, which is how, mo how modern rifles are typically used in combat, and that is clearly more effective. And then a couple of times we see some bursts at sort of medium range, something like that. And they're just, they're just totally ineffective. Automatic fire from a rifle is not useless, but it's rarely used in many armies today. So we've got a very good clip there showing showing the use of the AG SA-80 at that's using the sights, actually using the iron sights on the grenade launcher. Almost never, that doesn't happen in normal first person shooters, put it that way. And I've never fired a 40 mil grenade, under barrel grenade launcher, but the, the arc of the trajectory of the, of the projectile the explosion maybe looked a little bit too flamey. Grenades typically explode without a huge fireball. There'll be a flash, but not a orange and black fireball which we got there. So that one might be questionable, but in terms of its actual functionality, it's a relatively long range, quite accurate, uh, limited explosive radius weapon. Uh, so a real firepower boost to an infantry uh, squad and very commonly used today. Hey, grenade or, uh, grenade or that, my observe. Uh, any explosives on my observe right there, right behind that. We've got the G3KA4 specifically here. So that's a 762, what people insist on calling battle rifle, which I'm not a fan of, meaning essentially an automatic rifle in a larger caliber than an assault rifle is typically thought to be chambered in. Real world consequences of that are a cartridge so powerful that you can't really fire bursts with any, not from the shoulder, with any effectiveness. But it does mean that in a close quarter situation you can flick to automatic fire and put an absolutely devastating burst of fire down. This is nicely represented. Uh, you get the sense of the enhanced recoil that comes with that larger cartridge, especially as he's leaning around the wall and trying to put some fire down. It's, it's disturbing his position and hold every time he fires a shot and he's having to correct which is what happens with something like 556 five, you can keep it pretty much on and simply keep pulling the trigger in a blue building and just just as if by magic really illustrating what I'm saying about cartridges like 760 by 51 being too much for an automatic rifle our player has uh, encountered the enemy and panicked and has basically sprayed all around and and not really hit the enemy at all and the enemy has got at least one hit on them and they've had to run and hide and get into cover that's what happens if you can't maintain your composure you, you can fire very rapidly on, on semi-automatic and you won't get the same level of crazy dispersion as if you just hose the thing, which is what happened there. So that makes the point very, very graphically. Hold on, wait, Dom, there's enemy BTR here. Right, well you can't do the British infantry squad in the modern era without this thing. The L2, L129A1 sharpshooter. So named after the traditional British military role of sharpshooter. There was a, a capability gap between 5.56 rifles and sniper rifles, essentially, in 7.62. Something for the middle ground. They found they were being engaged from 600 out to 800 meters, perhaps. And they needed something to essentially fight back with. And so it's in the game. And it's actually a really nice little showreel there for the capabilities of this, this rifle. So it's accurate aimed fire to 800 meters despite the very short barrel. So that allows this to be a relatively compact weapon, which means you can use it at closer quarters as well. And we saw that in the game, which is obviously not real life, but it's reflecting it pretty closely because you can simply use the little red dot sight on top and speed up your um, cadence of pulling the trigger and you can essentially fulfill the role of an assault rifle. And I think I think we get a good sense of the punch of the 7.62 round there as we see uh, enemies in, sort of in the middle distance and when a shot connects with them, they drop. So quite realistic.
So this, this is a very Afghanistan war type. Um, the Hungarian AMD-65. So this is uh, one of a number of shortened Kalashnikov pattern rifles. Uh, it's somewhat distinctive in that it has its own muzzle device, muzzle brake on it. Quite simply, this, the pistol grip is duplicated on the front and flipped around to give you a sort of Tommy gun style foregrip, albeit one that juts forward. Now, I couldn't really tell how effective the AMD was being there, but I got the impression that the shorter barrel was definitely problem so we, we were less able to be accurate with that but of course at the sort of distances that fire is actually opened often sort of 200 meters or something it's perfectly adequate just as good as any other AK so it's easy to get too fixated on the reduced capabilities in this case of a short rifle but in the right situation it's really not going to be a problem I think this is my favourite rendition of the of the Minimi that I've seen in a game. The sound effect, I mean the sound effects generally are excellent, but there's that relatively distinctive high rate of fire. And I'm, I know I've been saying that uh, light machine guns should be used from the bipod, but a 5.56 light machine gun like the, the Minimi or a 5.45 one like, like the RPK absolutely can be fired from the shoulder if necessary. And of course traditionally you would fire a machine gun from the hip if you're at sufficiently close range. So the, the clip here gives us a bit of both. We see the, um, the player mounting the gun realistically on, on a stable platform, on some cover, and giving short bursts, as you'd mostly expect to do. And then we see it um, giving it some <laughs> somewhat um, more like that sort of assault rifle with a high capacity, which in fairness is exactly how the, uh, the 249 slash L110 Minimi in the British service has been used. Got a little clip there of a, a sniper in a helicopter, and he's he's holding his rifle in actually quite a realistic manner with the muzzle down, and he's sort of resting his hands on it. I've seen that done many times. I also know that would get you a severe telling off in, in many armed forces, and is not something you want to do with any kind of precision rifle, just in case you were to damage the, the muzzle. Now, in this case, it's a, a flash suppressor, so chances are you wouldn't do it any harm really a nice realistic detail of how, how people actually handle weapons and then it's kind of up for debate as to whether it's realistic or not. I think it is and it isn't depending on which armed force that you're portraying. So the rifle we're seeing here is the famous the Dragonov, the SVD. We've got two flavours, the standard version with the long barrel and the wooden furniture and the SVD-M with more modern black furniture on it and it's got a um, side folding stock on it as well so you can make it more compact for, for transport. It's a good implementation of, of that weapon. It's almost like watching, it's at the very least like watching an Afghanistan war movie and at times it's like watching actual footage from theatre. You can see how effective a semi-automatic scope rifle of that nature might be based on that footage alone so you're, you're able to pinpoint people at a distance and take them out with a single shot potentially. have to shout out for the ammunition system in this game I really appreciate this level of detail so a bit like the old-school shooters like Rainbow Six we've got accurately tracked use of ammunition in each magazine so if you take a partially fired magazine off the weapon it remains partially fired in contrast to any mainstream shooter these days it's quite a clever system so it goes from uh, you have a number of magazines in your in your webbing or your kit they start white they turn yellow then they turn orange the more critical the situation visually, the fewer rounds you have left in the magazine. Now, um, in the British Army, they always teach count your rounds. So this reflects what it would be like to remember vaguely how many rounds you had left in that mag, in that pouch, or maybe from, from the feel or from the weight, you might you, you would know roughly how many were in there. Quick visual check, if you can see the follower, you know you only have a few rounds left. So that is a really clever uh, system, I think. Yeah, it's a rarity to see the C7 depicted in a uh, in a video game. Done a really good job. We've got the clamped on uh, Picatinny rail down at the front, in front of the polymer traditional style handguard. And of course, optical sight wise, we've got um, 
Oh, and in the second clip, we've got the, the big rubber, uh, the sort of armored L original Elcan sight, the C79. Um, and in common with all of the optics in the game that I've seen, the reticle is absolutely perfect. And the depiction of fall of shot and how it all works is, is excellent. So they haven't just reskinned an ACOG, they've actually put in the time to model that optical sight and that specific variant of AR-15. So the M4, again, we always, nearly always, come across an M4 in any kind of military style shooter, FPS, and there's normally something I can point out and say that's not quite right, but um, not this time, I can't see anything. I'm sure there's some minor detail of the model if you, if you look at it under a microscope, but just from watching gameplay clips I can see absolutely nothing wrong with it. Good job. <laughs> So, a, a rarely seen weapon, the C14 Timberwolf rifle. It's in 338 Lapa Magnum, which as I think we've said before, is a, a very powerful cartridge uh, between sort of 7.62 and uh, 50 Browning machine gun, and with a lot of punch. So it'll go through all sorts of cover. So this caliber has become the, sta the new standard British Army sniper rifle caliber, just getting rid of 7.62. But the Timberwolf is a Canadian design. So this, this is one that's actually seen some, some use and hence it's come to us without its optical sight because those are those are valuable and can be carried over to replacement rifles. Whereas the rest of it is at the end of its useful life, so it is becoming a museum piece. Um, the version in the game, I think, is being the standard Canadian Armed Forces version, a little bit different, but this is the, uh, this is the Timberwolf. MBT. Right, we've got the RPG-26, rocket-based anti-tank anti weapon, and a lot of detail there in the modeling and in the animation. So we've, not only have we got the sights being flipped up, we've got the safety pin being pulled out as well. So a lot of attention to detail there. The sights, the, the iron sights function as they should as well. Don't have a great deal of experience with anti-tank weapons, but it's looking good to me. Something I do notice is that the, the sort of longer ranges that these, that this, anti-tank weapons being used that. In my experience of first-person shooters, you generally use them at a very close range because they're in, you, you need some serious skill or luck to actually lob a shot in at longer distance. This appears to be flying on a flatter, more realistic trajectory and you, you can actually reach out to, I don't know, maybe 300, 300 meters, which is, which is more like the realistic capability of the weapon. So just in common with the rest of the game, they are going for realism first and foremost. Right, uh, a, a really fascinating inclusion here is the uh, the UB32, and you normally see maybe two or maybe more of these hanging off a hind gunship. And uh, if you've not seen news footage with these, you might think this is absolute nonsense. It's not. Aiming them is the biggest problem. Uh, you can't easily really aim them. I don't really understand the first camera view we saw, which appeared, it almost looked sort of Dr. Strangelove's sat, across, uh, sat atop a bomb kind of thing, only you're sat atop of the rocket pod, which is clearly not what's happening. The exterior view of it firing shows how it would be uh, remote fired from within the cab. You, you adjust the right the angle that you want you know by estimation probably and then you'd fire it either from within the cab or possibly more likely from a disc from from away from the vehicle you don't fire it from behind or on top of the rocket because of course it's got rocket exhaust yeah so i don't know i assume it's just because otherwise they'd be unusable and so they need some sort of aiming view uh, i'm sure the comments will explain to me what's going on there so yeah this is an rpg 7 v2 fragmentation Rocket propelled grenade. Short story, you don't want to get hit by it. Hello! <laughs> My royal armories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's superb. So I gather uh, our presenter, Dave, has been recognised in game and a bunch of guys are showing off their weapons to him and explaining what they are, including an RPG loaded with a relatively unusual warhead that he's explaining and talking about backblast and 
the dangers of that. Uh, presumably in the game, as <laughs> not just in real life. No, that's, <laughs> that's good fun. I particularly like the sort of dancing about. I imagine whoever was in charge wasn't wasn't too happy about that little uh, mother's meeting in the middle of a <laughs> game session. Guys, what did it's you hear? a pistol to make your pew. Stay tuned, as ever, on this channel for, for more of this kind of thing. You can also head over to the Royal Armouries channel for some extra uh, firearm related content. If you'd like to donate to what we do here at the Royal Armouries Museum, um, there's links in the description. I'm also going to be appearing shortly on a uh, film podcast uh, with uh, RM Military History and The Armourer's Bench. Both channels worth checking out and they do a war movie review podcast so you can listen to me ramble on about a movie for a change if you like. Okay guys, see you again next time.